And we are live. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Gentleman of Crypto, where we bridge the gap between cryptocurrency and the community, Monday through Friday at 10 ish. I'm your host, Bitcoin Zay, here to bring you the news for today. Let a few more people come on in. What's going on, Antonio? Jizzy Mac doing a solo today. Yep, P Man Van going solo. What's going on, Tony Nolly? How we doing today? Let a few more people come on in on Facebook as well and YouTube. Appreciate you all uh, joining us today. And uh, right off the top, we're going to go ahead and present our uh, winners for the Cryptic Coin Lottery Contest. So for those of you who participated, thank you. Thank you for everybody who submitted things that we've taught you as well as future use cases for Cryptic Coin. Like we've always stated, this is a community privacy coin used to help people who want to learn about Bitcoin and about cryptocurrency in general. Uh, so our winners, uh, without further ado, let's get to the winners. Our first runner up uh, who won 25,000 cryptic coins is Ryan Cooper. Shout out to Ryan Cooper. So give him a big hand, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan Cooper, for your submission. Uh, one of our warriors has been around for a long time. Uh, congrats to him. And without further ado, our winner for the 100,000 cryptic coin, it is AbleNet Tech. Thank you, AbleNet Tech. Let me give you that big hand clap. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your submission. Awesome, awesome use case for cryptic coin, as well as a lot that he's learned from us. He's been around uh, for uh, pretty much the whole time we've been in, uh, doing the show. So good good job to ryan cooper and ablenet tech once again thank you everybody who participated uh those cryptic coins will be sent out uh by today or tomorrow uh we'll wait for the foundation i'll send that to you and with shannon allen so for those of you who are watching on facebook and on youtube like we say we give away free cryptic coin every day uh and or free cryptocurrency every day and like we said before this lottery was to get people involved to get people to understand we give away free money all the time so shout out to some more people coming in Derek, slight friends christopher jones oh yeah yeah keep me yeah keep my tabs for the ribs and cigars brother uh let's see dexter hand kevin gorman donald muhammad oh yeah thank you for that definitely <clears throat> trying to keep up the good work malik howard my people allison thompson malik howard oh yeah appreciate you all for coming in so our stories for today include uh the new hampshire bill for bitcoin payments uh, Jamaican security tokens, the CBOE ETF withdrawal, the Robinhood Liberty X New York bit license, uh, Joe Rogan and Killer Mike's comments on Bitcoin. And our top story of the day is Samsung Galaxy S10 has unveiled or through a tweet has unveiled that the S10 device shows support for cryptocurrencies within the device. Uh, actually, it is named the Samsung blockchain key store. Uh, and it's described as both a secure and convenient place for your cryptocurrency. Uh, it is a place to secure and manage your blockchain private key because remember, not your keys, not your Bitcoin. And I am interested to see how when they unveil it, February 20th is when they unveil this new phone. I'm interested to see how many people who are in the crypto community actively actually use it. I'm sure that those who aren't in the community will pay attention when they see that, hey, we have phones with built in crypto wallets. Um, the image shows that multiple cryptocurrencies are supported, although the only one na named on there is Ethereum. Uh, that's kind of weird. However, uh, you know, if they have other, you know, coins that you can put onto the wallet, they haven't stated it yet. It hasn't come out. But right now it's only showing Ethereum, which is kind of weird. Uh, previous leaks in December implied that uh, the S10 would include a wallet app with two parts, cold wallet for storing and a hot wallet for transactions. So. Uh, if they actually have the security and they, the uh, wallet is useful, I'm sure everyone who has a Galaxy S10 or who purchases it February 20th uh, will actually love it. Uh, this will be, in my opinion, the start of a revolution in the phone industry, as well as any sort of storage industry. The crypto wallet will have to be included in order to be viable, in my opinion. I don't think anybody uh, will have a phone you know, in the future or a storage device without some sort of crypto compatibility. Um, so... In my opinion, this is big news from Samsung. Uh, the onboarding process of uh, people into Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is sort of hard. Uh, it's getting a lot better, but it's so much easier when you have the crypto wallet already on the phone. You don't have to download any apps. 
And it's pretty simple to use as far as sending and receiving. You don't have to go into blockchain technology and proof of work and hash functions. You can literally just say it's money. You can transfer it. This is the exchange rate. And people can go from there. So glad to see that from Samsung. Absolutely. So let's see who else we got in here. Erica Beach. Thank you for joining in. Brian Hanley. Uh, first live in a long time. Thank you. Maurice Parks. Yeah. And it's not just any phone. We're talking about probably the second, I think the second highest selling phone in the industry. So Leroy Forbes joining in. Milto. Oh, yeah. Shout out to you. Um, and Blockchain Shuja. Okay. So moving on. The New Hampshire bill to legalize Bitcoin for state payments is set to come in 2020. Oh, yeah. So not much time left. Uh, lawmakers in the U.S. state of New Hampshire, they are currently considering a bill to legalize payment of fees and taxes in Bitcoin. These documents were originally published January 3rd. However, the NHHB 470 is making its way through the Chambers of Commer uh, Commerce and it has a public hearing that took place yesterday. So, um uh, the subcommittee will review this January 29th and they'll make a final decision March 14th. So this is just another state in a long line of states that we have described yesterday. Uh, we talked about Pennsylvania uh, recognizing crypto ATMs outside of the realm of money transmitter licenses. Uh, someone mentioned Missouri. Um, we've talked about Wyoming. And now we have New Hampshire, who is trying to find a way to basically have you pay things in Bitcoin, because in my opinion, this is just my opinion. If we have a sort of government shutdown or a sort of crash at some point, people will need to pay their taxes in something and they will accept any money that is viable. So in my opinion, uh, this is really what states are going for, as well as competition with other countries and other states in order to uh, attract Bitcoin and blockchain businesses. So gr glad to see that from New Hampshire. A lot of lawmakers who, who bring up these bills, um, you know, they're big crypto fans, but they can't say it out loud. So people like us have to bring it to you. And present to you like, look, there are people that are in the, there's good guys on, on both sides. It's good and bad on both sides. Just got to find a few of the good ones to push some stuff through. And if they make it mandatory, that's a problem. But if they give you the choice, then you have more payment options available. So thankfully, uh, we have that uh, from New Hampshire. So shout out to those those lawmakers there. Keep pushing hard. Mm. Ah, some good old Traders Joe T. So moving forward, uh, CBOE. They have announced that they have withdrawn their ETF that they wanted to uh, actually propose, uh, and it was backed by Van Act and SolidX. Uh, the announcement really didn't do anything to the price. You know, most people who were counting on the ETF uh, price to, you know, or the the acceptance of it to push the price or maybe push it down in the short term. However, one of the good things about a uh, bear market is you know it's starting to get close to over. When bad news doesn't affect it, it's it's not the opposite. It's usually, you know, in the bear market, people think good news. Oh, yeah, the bear market is going to turn. No, usually bear markets turn when bad news stops affecting the price, which the price literally did nothing, hasn't done anything for about a week, stayed in the same 80 to $100 range. Um, so in my opinion, this ETF withdrawal signals to me uh, actually more of a turn in the market that we may be either at the bottom or close to it. And if you miss, uh, in my opinion, if you miss the next bull run, uh, you will probably be one of those people in 2025, uh, like my parents were describing how they could have gotten a Google and could have gotten an Apple. So this is definitely good to see, uh, in my opinion, withdraw the ETF and we don't really need it. We keep saying it. We went from 10 cent to 20K without an ETF. So it's, it's never been a uh, something we, we definitely need, but, you know, people bring it up. So let's see what else we got. Crypto and culture. Yep. We don't need it. Exactly. Weak hands are gone. Uh, most of the people who are holding at this point are definitely in the game long term. Um, and let's see, you know, you know, just in general, if you have an ETF decision later this year, uh, if it does affect the price, the price shoots up. That's fine. But like I've always stated, we don't need it. We just need each other. So let's see who else. Football man. Let's see. Jesse Mack. Yeah, you're right. Nobody should miss the next bull run if you've been watching us for, you know, more than a week or so uh, the way we talk about it. So shout out to CBOE uh moving forward good old jamaica ja the jamaican stock exchange is planning to list security tokens as tradable assets for clients got to give them that big hand clap shout out to the jamaica stock exchange actually met some uh, brothers and sisters who worked closely with them at the black blockchain summit in october and they were actually stating 
that security security tokens were the next step uh, for their stock exchanges in their country. So good to see you here. You know, a few months later, and here we are. Uh, Marlene Street Forest, the JSE's managing director, said that the trial has been very smooth so far, and the exchange is quite happy with the results. Uh, she stated, "We are looking forward to moving into the next stage of the pilot." which would eventually include the listing of security tokens. And what this means for the crypto market is that STOs and you know security tokens that have been mentioned, there are decentralized ones, but there are also some that will be used on the regulatory side. In my opinion, places like uh, the JSE, this does nothing but bring good news to them. And you know, honestly, when Forrest stated to Coindesk, the end game at the end of the day is the trade tokens. The end game is smart contracts. And the end game is to provide that area of the market that would like this product to start to do so in a secure manner. So anyone that's in the crypto market or that's looking at security tokens for the future, this is exactly the type of trading platform that will allow you to do it. So shout out to Jamaica. Um, we've had, you know, so certain people, you know, like yesterday said, crypto startup Zil uh, Ziliqua and MyCoin partnered to build a centralized security token exchange in Singapore. Uh, the platform aims to ultimately tokenize shares of big name companies like Airbnb, Uber and SpaceX. So we have seen this before. We've seen people try and, uh, you know, make tokens, you know, you know, security tokens on their platform, which is good. However, you know, I'm glad to see Jamaica simply because they're rising up and nobody can stop cryptocurrency. If countries take heed and they start, you know, putting things more uh, in the digital realm and you can have things instant, it'll at least change it. So even if. We can't take over the world with crypto and it doesn't, you know, 100 percent of people don't use it. At the very least, these industries have to change their way of doing business to appease the users, because if we have another choice, we have leverage. Before this, we didn't have any leverage. So definitely good to see that. Let's see who else we got. Donald Muhammad. Yep. We talked about this story paying taxes uh, in Bitcoin in Ohio. Yep. So another state. We're up to about five or six states that have big legislation coming through. Um, let's see. Crypto key. Real talk. Zay, but people keep trying to push that. We really need ETFs. Of course. They always are going to say you, we need ETFs. We need a way for institutional investors to get in safely. They keep you know, spouting the same stuff, but I'm not buying it at all. Uh, let's see. Jamel Hook, how much disposable cash do you think the average person could start with and make nice amount of money years in the future? Uh, I've told my story a few times five years ago, going on six in October. Uh, I started with four hundred dollars. Um, the price of Bitcoin has changed dramatically since I started. Uh, the, the industry has changed dramatically, but a couple hundred dollars should get you in the game just fine to buy and use. And then if you want to learn how to trade, how to mine, how to accept Bitcoin, all those things come into play as far as earning Bitcoin. So, yeah, Jamil, I can definitely help you with that. Let's see. Uh, Crypto key. It's crazy that we miss out on the weed profits. That makes no sense. Yeah, man, it's, it's one of those industries that we can't miss out on because we missed the tech boom. We missed the marijuana boom. We can't miss the crypto boom. And, you know, that's that's one thing I've been saying for the last few years. So Christopher Jones question, is it easier to use cryptocurrency in other countries than the U.S.? Absolutely. Uh, there are multiple countries or multiple places in Europe. Uh, there are uh, places like Singapore, you know, yeah, you, you know, Japan. I mean, it's, it's plenty of places where their use of cryptocurrency way outdoes ours. And they already have a system in place where they pay digitally. So I've seen videos of small children paying with an Apple Watch or with a you know a, a cell phone for digital payments. Um, we're here. Digital payments are pretty slow to pick up uh, at brick and mortar stores. Online has been pretty good, but mostly it has been a store of value, uh, uh, so to say. So definitely, uh, you know, U.S. is mostly speculation. Absolutely. And Christopher Jones, will you write a book? I actually am writing it now, uh, set to be published in March if I have my way. But uh, yeah, definitely working on that now. I just put out a book actually uh, last month. So working hard, definitely. You can probably tell by the bags under my eyes. So let's see. Uh, Neek Deadwiler, thanks for joining. Yeah, get some skin in the game. And Tony Nolly, yep, doesn't matter how much, just get in the game. $10 worth, $20. So uh, definitely, definitely just get in the game, have some skin in the game. All right. So Moving forward from that story, Robinhood and Liberty X are the latest companies to receive licenses from New York regulators, also dubbed the Bit License. Uh, stock trading company Robinhood and Bitcoin ATM provider Liberty X, I'm sorry, I laughed at the uh, author's picture. It just kind of caught me by surprise, have become the latest companies uh, to be granted New York's Bit License. The New York Department of Financial Services announced Thursday it was granting Robinhood Crypto. Uh, a subsidiary of the uh, main firm Moon Inc., who uh, 
who does business under the Liberty X moniker, uh, money transmission licenses. So what this means is that they can operate in New York now under the permission of people who have nothing to do with crypto. Unfortunately, these uh, these bit licenses have been forced upon companies who want to operate in New York. There's such a big market in New York. You almost have to go there because people want to use it. But if you're going to do it, you have to get through the gatekeepers. And currently those gatekeepers are the New York Department of Financial Services with that bit license. I'm honestly tired of talking of, of, of about a bit license. I mean, to, at this point, we have about, what, 20 companies that have gotten a bit license and the process is slow, it's useless, and it's run by people who don't have crypto as, you know, their top priority. It's literally just how can we make money off of you Buy our license or you can't work here. So when people are in control, you have to take over. Um, the way the best way you can so right now i can understand getting these licenses however in the future with decentralized exchanges and the the way that as fast as currency is moving i don't see that license having much much pool in my opinion so hmm. shout out to robin hood shout out to liberty x if you don't know uh, liberty x uh as a bitcoin atm provider you can actually download it on your phone uh, i remember it used to be when i used to use it with liberty x you could go to stores and you could actually buy bitcoin at a store. So basically uh, you would uh, send the money online and when you show up at a store, they would give you cash. So uh, Liberty X has come a long way to get that New York bit license. Uh, this company will be the first licensed firm to allow residents to buy Bitcoin using debit cards through traditional ATMs, uh, according to the release. So Liberty X has come a long way, all the way to the point where you can use your debit card at ATMs to purchase cryptocurrency. If that gets implemented into traditional ATMs, which some of the business partners I work with, we're working on that now. Uh, if that starts to happen, that's when you'll start to see the flood of people buying cryptocurrency because there would be no excuse at that point. You can walk up, you can buy it instantly for a low fee. Fees are kind of high right now because uh, the demand is, is very high. But once we start to get back into the flow of things where people are buying mostly, then you'll start to see those, those fees come down a bit. Uh, so let's see who we got in the comments. Ryan Cooper's in there. Oh, yeah. Shout out to you again uh, for winning that 25,000 crip uh, and able net tech as well. Let's see. Cryptober. Uh, love your live streams. Football. I'm not sure that is football, man, but football, man. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to check you out. Let's see. Harold George. I'm buying that book when you're done. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm <clears throat> before it comes out, I will have the uh, the pre-orders uh, ready for it. But the book, uh, I don't want to give the name out now, but I uh, work very hard on it. Uh, and I definitely am ready to put that out. So I can reveal some of the, the other stuff in the bigger picture of the world. So let's see, crypto peer, crypto to fiat is the biggest problem right now. Yeah. And that's why I got ATMs to try and solve that problem. But it's, it's going to take a little while. Coinstar is trying to do that now. So it's, it's one of those one of those things where it takes time. People it takes time. Got to have some patience. And shout out to main man on Facebook. Uh, my cousin right there. I buy mine through Cash App. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of people buy Bitcoin through Cash App. Uh, through Abra, uh, Robinhood is another place. Robinhood actually listed Dogecoin. So if you're if you're a real crypto enthusiast and want to get in on Doge, Dogecoin, you could do it on Robinhood. So uh, let's see. Moving forward, one of my favorite podcasters in the game, Joe Rogan. He actually has stated Bitcoin will become like dollar bills. Uh, if you watched yesterday, he had uh, one of my favorite episodes with Killer Mike. Uh, the Joe Rogan experience actually brought him on to talk about economics, his his uh, new show Trigger Warning, which is awesome uh, to talk about, you know, politics. And one of the things he mentioned is that uh, Killer Mike actually stated, I just put a lot of money in the S&P 500. I don't know about that one. I don't know a lot about cryptocurrency and stuff. I'm learning how to have money, which is that is a real problem. Some people, they come into money and they have to realize how to you know delegate it uh, correctly. Uh, Rogan actually, you know, responded by saying, I'm fascinated fascinated by them. The idea of a de decentralized economy, the amount of money that banks control. If you just stop and think about it, what goes on with the Federal Reserve, what goes on with all the money and how much a dollar is worth overseas. If there was a thing that we could all rely on that wasn't controlled by a group of people who have a vested interest in profiting off this pile of money, if it was sort of a Bitcoin like thing, it would be a really different world. It would be really, really different. And that's the world we're trying to create. Uh, smart people like Killer Mike and Joe Rogan realize the world is changing. And, you know, they Killer Mike even said he went even further and said it would be different if the world was moneyless. It would be different if there was a gold standard again. Uh, it'd be a lot of differences. So but he actually kind of said what most people say. They, they love it. They love the idea of it. But then the question comes, is the banking mafia of sorts ever going to let this happen? And I've always stated that it's not about them letting it happen. It's happening. It, they can't stop it. Obviously, they can, you know, roll out different food. People can say they hate it. People say that, you know, it's going to go to zero. 
you're not stopping Bitcoin at, at any point, uh, in my opinion. So, uh, and Rogan, he finally followed it up by saying Bitcoin will be like dollar bills, like some kind of thing with gold lettering, which it would be interesting to see if they have if they print physical bills backed by Bitcoin uh, one day instead of the gold standard or some other standard, silver standard. But, uh, you know, that day, if that day comes, you know, I'll be, you know, what basically contact with me will probably be uh, as hard as it gets because I'll be out the country. But if that happens, that would be amazing. Let's see. Uh, Jamel Hook, I'm from New York. It is like a Commonwealth state. They do what they want. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the bankers run, run New York. We know that. Uh, Polonex actually took a lot of people's money um, because they didn't want to do KYC. And, you know, that's Polonex. That's why they're one of our worst exchanges of the year. And let's see, crypto and culture. Does Cash App and Robinhood let you send or receive? Yes, it actually does. Yeah, and Ryan Cooper answered that for you. So once again, glad to hear from Joe Rogan. Uh, Joe Rogan is not a Bitcoin millionaire, as they, you know, as people stated. However, he did tweet his Bitcoin address uh, back in 2014, which so far has raised over five Bitcoins, uh, which is about 18,000 right now. So he is a holder. Um, Joe Rogan is. And hopefully I actually just DM Killer Mike. I'm actually trying to get with him to try to teach him about cryptocurrency and maybe bring him on the show as well. So if I can get a contact with Killer Mike, he will definitely be on the show and we can get him on the crypto wave absolutely so with that being said i wanted to finish with some good news that is our show for today i want to thank you all for tuning in to the gentleman of crypto once again uh shout out to ryan cooper for winning the twenty-five thousand cryptic coins and able net tech for winning the one hundred thousand cryptic coins uh though the, both of you will get, receive those cryptic coins today or tomorrow uh, i am so glad to be here with you all make sure you download the brave browser to support us and also make sure you can purchase the Bitcoin Starter Guide at shopkrbecrypto.com. I'll say that again, shopkrbecrypto.com. Thank you for everyone, and I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one.